But you talk about negotiating the money with you. This is what I'm talking about. But no, man, rap, you tripping, bro. It ain't about the money, man. See, it's about the money for you, rap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it really? Is it just rap with the money or is it these ownership groups? Look, I told y'all at the top of the show. One of my passions is talking about sports, watching sports, and participating in sports. But I'm not going to be a sucker for love for y'all. I'm sorry, I can't. No way, no how. We keep talking. Look, they, they look, they, you going to keep game. All these t-shirts y'all buy. Look, think about this, y'all. Most of us have bought a new t-shirt every year, a new hat every year, a new coat, socks, drawers, jerseys, everything. We had these parties. We going out kicking it. They've been they've been printing money off our back. The first sign of weakness, what happened? What happened? Well, we gonna need some of that money back if you play. And uh, I was my man out west was in the chat room because he told me uh, it ain't a whole bunch of whole lot bunch of small businesses in America and America not built on small business. I know this is a Saturday conversation, but did the, did the Lakers just get approved for a four million dollar uh small business loan? Because they got less than five, five, 500 employees. Yeah, that's the Los Angeles Lakers, one of the most profitable organizations in the history of sports and the current world as we live. Told you, man. If we keep, hey, don't doubt the rap, man. Don't doubt rap. Don't doubt rap. I mean, I'll just be saying this stuff, you know. A lot of people, oh, man, he just be yammering. No, nah, man, I be looking into this stuff, man. I don't just be reaching in my drawers, pulling this out of my ass. This is stuff I looked into. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see it on the news and, 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 and looked into it before I shoot it off, pop it off at you. It may be a percentage off, or it might be a word missing, or what have you, a mistake being made. But the prevailing point is always fact based. You can think this is my thing if you like, but I'm giving it to you the way it was given to me, and I after I've done research. So. With that being said, and that being said only, your man is finna proceed. These Major League Baseball teams are full of manure. 168 games, 162 games a year plus the playoffs, TV contracts, both nationally and locally, and they ask for these ball players to get them some money back. Really? That's what y'all on? That's what y'all on? Alright. That's what y'all are. I see that's what y'all are. This week, I've made the return. So I was going to be we back on the uh, sports talk barbershop side of the game. I'm going to put it on pause and let y'all hear the... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In, in light of the festivities over the weekend, the top nine has returned. It is the top nine people who got drafted out of nowhere and blew up like the world trade. Shout out to the guys. Uh, uh, because they full of crap. My man, uh, Big Illinois, they said, why did the Lakers apply for a loan? Because according to them, they were trying to pay their non-athletic uh, uh, employees, you know, the people in the in the stands and, you know, the concession people and stuff like that. They couldn't pay them out their pockets. So they just want their court, but they gave the loan back. Why in the hell is a organization worth a billion dollars taking out a four million dollar loan but it ain't about the money remember it's, uh, thank you big in the north shout out to big in the north for state participating in this year mm -hmm. but it ain't about the money it ain't about the money remember that's what y'all told me it ain't about the money there we go but these are in light of the draft last week i was thinking i'm sitting back contemplating with me and my executive uh, 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 producer, a.k.a. Joe from Houston. We, uh, we've grown over notes for the show, and I said, I got an idea. I need to tell Joe about the top. I told him the top nine was coming back. The, the top nine has made this return. We have more fun on the end of the bench, but I didn't tell him what it was going to be. This week is going to be the top nine people in the modern draft era. I'm not going back to the 70s when they had 95 rounds. I'm starting in the early eight or mid-80s, and I'm moving forward. If you want to, you can add someone as well. So don't take it personal, Jermaine. But these are the nine people who I think that were drafted late, that people don't really look at as late draft picks. Joe Need a Race. Man, I doubled the salary this week. But see, Big Illinois always in my business, man. Shout out to Big Illinois for sticking up for Joe. But I gave Joe 
double his salary because he got four kids, man. Here we go. He's making twice as much as he was making this time last year. Twice as much. Did your employer give you a raise, Mr. Uh, Elmo? About 500 k Don't worry about his 500 k Worry about yours, man. Do we write, do we write checks at your job? Do you need uh, Joe's agent to come to your job? All right, then. Number nine on my list. The ninth, the, let me reset this. It's like a big annoying. I always interfere. Man, you know, that, that guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If y'all ever wonder why I never do 10, Chuck D only counted nine. So it's only nine on the list. Number nine. Number 59, Seth Joyner. I always had affinity for the number 59. Chico Rivera, okay, a.k.a. Ron Rivera. Don't think I'm being racial. That was his nickname. Chico Rivera from the Chicago Bears, uh, Seth joined a few others. I'm about to uh, uh, apply with Joe's firm, and they ain't taking no more uh, people from Illinois. How about that? Seth joined one of the best linebackers in the world, won Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos, played all across the league, played with the Philadelphia Eagles, unstoppable, mean, nasty, could cover, could blitz the quarterback, was hit. He was a hard hitter. He was picked in the seventh round. People who picked in the seventh round are usually called camp bodies. They hardly ever make it. Big ups to self for making mad love for that brother. <laughs> Next up on the list, a dude who I wish the homie RC was in the gym. It's off his team out of the University of Michigan. Most people don't even know this dude was a late round pick. He was small. He was he wasn't that fast, but he knew how to get. Wide open. He used to destroy my hometown, Chicago Bears. He was destroying the league. At one point, he was being compared to Jerry Rice, but because of his small stature, he got beat up and beat up real quick. But the dude was dominating the National Football League for about a five-year period. He goes by the name of AC, a.k.a. Anthony Carter. He's in the building. Next up, and last for now, a dude who, he also, man, his, his basketball ability, I mean, uh, football abilities are second to none. Uh, it, the story has it that he was supposed, he was drafted late at a Western Michigan University. He was supposed to be a guy who they were going to develop. He hit the scene, uh, 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 he hit the scene. And uh, 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 and and he hit the practice. He hit the practice field. And uh, once he hit the practice field, he started dominating. He burnt one of the premier corners, which is Ike Turner, and practiced three straight plays. And Ryan Clark walked up to Mike Tomlin and said, "Whoa!" And Mike Tomlin said, "So much for that." He said, "What's that? We just gonna put him on the practice squad." But uh, he he playing. Shout out to the brother Antonio Brown. Hopefully he gets, look, look. AB has done some stupid stuff in recent times. But when you young, and I know 30 is not super young. When you're young, you have a PhD in stupidity. I have one. I, I, might, I might talk to class for a little while. But with that being said, you have a PhD in stupidity when you're young. He, he, he working on his master's right now. I don't know if he got a PhD yet, but man. Don't hold the mistakes that this young brother has made against him for the rest of his life. Antonio Brown, hopefully you can get your life back on track, your fight, your 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 your, your career back on track, uh, uh, and then move for move for move forward. But in the meantime, we celebrate you on the end of the bench, man. You dominate football like no other. You got the most goodest feet, and I did say most goodest. I'm from the west side of Chicago. We say most goodest on the west side. Uh, we got the most goodest feet I ever seen. The man is explosive. The man got some of the most goodest hands I've ever seen. And he cuts most people out without even thinking about it. Hey, when you can do that, you got to be on my list. With that being said, pick up to Antonio Brown. I got mad love for you, but you can like, you know what? We're going we gonna to enjoy watching you next time. See you. Now, with that being said, mad love to everybody who tuned in. This is the End of the Bench Podcast. Returning to the energy, returning to the form, bringing the barbecue back to the internet. We don't build for this network. I am HRAB. We kicking it. We going in back to the show. Now, with that being said, 
I was, what we're going to do right now is I'm going to say my least favorite part for the last part of the show. The NFL draft this weekend, I got to give big ups to Roger Goodell. Hey, hey man, the National Football League, whether you like Roger Goodell or not, I'm just going to share this with y'all. I think the brother is fool. If you don't know what fool means, he was turning that motherfucking yinak up. He was sipping that yinak at the, at the draft because he was at the crib in a little cozy leather chair with the books behind him. He ain't read the books, y'all. Roger Goodell. Hey, you ever know, you ever know some people with all those books? All those books always be in place. They don't ever be out of place. So how you read them books? But anyway, man, Roger Goodell, National Football League, they had the uh, Zoom going for the fans, big ups to incorporating the fans. They had the people and their families, and they had the little, little chicks trying to overexpose themselves. But then they had, man, it was it was a wonderful situation. I wouldn't mind seeing that a lot more. If they could tweak that a little bit more, and maybe, you know, with a big family celebration, and you there with your family, that might be cool to keep doing that right there. But they got out, man. The NFL did the damn thing as usual. They continue to be trailblazers in regards to entertainment. The NBA are trailblazers in regards to doing things socially and politically correct. The National Football League holding it down on entertainment. <laughs> now, with that being said, allow rap to critique this. The only thing I ain't really like about it, man, is all the over critiquing. Look. Everybody in the history of the world, everybody in the history of the world who knows anything about football knows it takes three to five years to actually uh, evaluate what the hell went on. Seriously. So why everybody? Why is everybody overreacting? Everybody is in the damn, uh, 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 they in the damn, I told you so wrong. And then what really kills me is people be talking about what Mel Kiper Jr. said. Hold it, man. Mel Kiper Jr. don't know about more about football than Bill Belichick. Mel Kiper Jr. does not know more about football than Bill Belichick. So why are we saying Mel Kiper? Did Bill Belichick know what he was doing? Mel Kiper and me have the exact same amount of Super Bowl wins and NFL coaching wins. So ain't nobody, yo, rap. Is Bill Belichick wrong? No, he's not wrong. Look. We won't know if he's wrong for five years, but you know what? I've heard Mel Kiper Jr. tell me that a bunch of busters was the man, and they ended up not being the man. I I seen Bill Belichick get a bunch of dudes that y'all said was busters, and they end up being the man. So who am I going to listen to? Look, did we expect some of these people to get picked? No. Now, if you want to talk about somebody who, who might have be uh, registered on an idiot Richter scale, uh, John Group. Uh, I'm, everybody know me. I'm a big Raiders fan. I'm from Chicago, but I'm a big Raiders fan. I like the Bears, but I'm a Raiders fan. The Raiders is the team I picked. The Bears is the city I, uh, I was born in. So that's how I get out with that. But the thing is this. Why in the fuck did you draft... Henry Rush III. Henry Rush III had a very impressive uh, 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 season last year. He looks explosive. He looks dope. But didn't y'all draft an explosive dope receiver? A couple uh, uh, look like he don't be dope receiver about eight to ten years ago. Darius Haywood Bay because he was fast as hell and couldn't nobody keep up with. Him. The thing about receivers is. You need to find the best route runner. And the best route runner, some of them were drafted after Henry Rose. Look, you cannot duplicate 427 speed. Do not get me twisted. Am I, do I think this is a mistake? Yes. Do I, am I mad at the pick? No. Would I have drafted Henry Ruggs? Not with those other dudes like Jerry Judy still on the board when all I heard from the experts uh, who... Uh, 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 all I heard from the experts was, hey, Jerry Judy is one of the best route runners in, in football, uh, in college football. Henry Ruggs is still developing. Why would I get the dude who's still developing seeing how the position you play is one of the more difficult ones? See, we don't like 
Bill Belichick, so we jumped on him. And John Gruden...